So far, we've been talking about tissue types. Here, we're going to talk about body membranes, which form from a combination of tissue types. Body membranes are a physical barrier between structures in the body. And they do this by lining or covering body surfaces. Body membranes consist of epithelium over connective tissue. And in this way, they're considered simple organs. Remember the definition for an organ is two or more tissues working together for a common purpose. There are four types of body membranes. First, are synovial membranes. Next are mucous membranes. Then serous. And lastly, cutaneous membranes. So let's look at the first one, which is synovial membranes. Synovial membranes line cavities surrounding most joints. To clarify, a joint is where two or more bones connect. The type of joints that, that synovial fluids can be found in, or synovial membranes are found in, are called synovial joints. They generally consist of connective tissue, and in this case it is areola connective tissue. But it doesn't look like the type you're used to looking at because it has a lot of collagen in the extracellular matrix. In addition, it sits on an atypical type of epithelium. The epithelium is atypical because first it's derived from connective tissue or it develops out of connective tissue, which is not the way that epithelial develops. Secondly, there are spaces between the cells. The cells generally are fibroblasts or immune cells, and again, that is also not typical for epithelium. So we'll just call it atypical epithelium. So let's take a look at this picture here. We've got two bones surrounded by a, a joint capsule, and it is lined with synovial membranes. If we look to the expansion over here, it also has a cavity. If we look to the expansion over here, you'll see the areola connective tissue with the atypical epithelium. So it is this tissue which secretes the serous fluid, synovial fluid, um, that is in the joint cavity. So what's the purpose of the synovial fluid? Well, it's actually to uh, decrease friction between adjacent structures during movement. And the role of the synovial membrane is to secrete this fluid. So you can see that the, they've got two surfaces of bones here surrounded by cartilage, which helps protect the surfaces somewhat. But the fluid actually decreases the friction so as to prolong the life of the bones. Next membrane we're going to look at is called a mucous membrane. Mucous membranes are find are found lining body cavities that open to the exterior. So there are some examples shown in the picture below. 
Um, so these are showing, uh, think of organ systems that open to the exterior. So the first one you'll notice is the mouth, the digestive system. Opens to the outside at the mouth. Goes down through the esophagus to the stomach and then the small intestines. Eventually it opens again to the outside at the anus. So the digestive system then is lined with mucous membranes. Another example would be the respiratory system. So you can see the um, nasal cavity opens to the outside and goes into the lungs. Lining of the bronchi eventually open to the outside. So the respiratory system is lined with mucous membranes. If you think of other body systems or digestive or other organ systems that open to the outside, they include the urinary and the reproductive. Now the, all of these membranes have to be kept wet and usually they're kept wet uh, by mucus. Mucous membranes are composed of stratified squamous epithelium or simple columnar epithelium. Remember that stratified squamous epithelium are many layers of flat cells, certainly flat at the free edge. Simple columnar is one layer of tall and thin cells. And these sit on a type of connective tissue called lamina propria. Lamina propria is actually areola connective tissue, but with a lot more cells in it. Lamina propria is the type of connective tissue that is found in mucous membranes. Now again, mucous membranes secrete mucus. And you'll notice mucus is spelled M-U-C-U-S, whereas the mucus in front of the word membranes is M-U-C-O-U-S, because it's an adjective versus mucus, M-U-C-U-S being a noun. So just a little bit of difference um, in the spelling. Mucous membranes must be wet and all of these organ systems release mucus to do that, except the urinary system in which urine is actually keeping the membranes wet. So the role of mucous membranes is to secrete the mucus, but in doing so, it decreases friction between the membrane and whatever might be moving along it. So within the digestive system, it is food that's moving through the system the mucus lubricates it so it doesn't get stuck in the intestines or anywhere else. But other, place, other places such as the respiratory system um, and the digestive system also have different roles. So for example, the mucus facilitates absorption and that's a role in the digestive system, especially in the small intestine. Another role is it protects so think of the opening of the mouth or the esophagus. As food moves down, the mucus protects the surface. Or the vagina, again, it is protecting. And even the lungs, the mucus catches debris, and then cilia push the de debris upward towards the mouth, so where it's spit out or the nose, so it doesn't get to the lungs. That would be protection. The next membrane are called serous membranes. And these are found in closed ventral body cavities. So remember, ventral means towards the front of the body. Closed means they do not open to the outside of the body. So in the picture, you, see, you can see some examples of closed ventral body cavities. One involves the abdominal cavity, which contains the abdominal organs, which are part of the digestive system. So you might say, well, the digestive system opens to the outside, and you would be correct. 
and it is lined with mucous membranes. But the cavity itself does not open to the outside, so it is lined with serous membranes. Serous membranes are composed of simple squamous epithelium on top of connective tissue. And the connective tissue is areola connective tissue. These membranes tend to have two layers. One layer lines the cavity, and that's called the parietal layer. The other layer covers the organs in the cavity, and that's called the visceral layer. So if we go back to the digestive system, the layer that lines the cavity is called the parietal peritoneum. Peritoneum indicates it's the abdominal cavity. And the layer that covers the organs in the cavity is called the visceral peritoneum. So that would be your digestive organs. Likewise, if you look at the other cavities, you'll see the same thing. Now, the two, the two layers, the parietal and visceral layer, secrete serous fluid. And what the serous fluid does, its role, is to lubricate the surface and reduce friction. And the friction is between the organs and the cavity that the organs are in. So again, if you think of the digestive system, the digestive organs are moving all the time. And they're rubbing up against the cavity. The serous fluid reduces friction between the cavity and the organs, so to prevent damage to both. The same is true of the pericardium. The heart is in the pericardium. Peri means around, cardium means heart. The heart is constantly expanding and contracting. And as it does so, it rubs up against the cavity. The serous fluid reduces the friction between the two, which protects the heart and the cavity that it sits in. Similarly, uh, the same thing happens within the pleural cavities in which the lungs sit. The last membrane is called the cutaneous membrane, and this covers the body. It is composed of keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. Keratinized means there's a protein called keratin inside the cells. Keratinized strat stratified squamous epithelium sitting on dense irregular connective tissue. Now you might remember that stratified means many layers. Squamous means the cells on the free edge are flat. So if we look at an example of a cutaneous membrane, which is essentially skin, covers the body, you can see that this outer layer here is the stratified squamous epithelium, many layers. The cells on the free edge are flat, mainly because they have a lot of keratin in them, which flattens them. Then if you look below this layer, you'll see the dense irregular connective tissue, which consists of lots of collagen traveling in all different directions, which helps to strengthen the tissue so that it could be pulled in different directions without pulling apart.